Sculptor of the damned, my name, my tell of terror coincides. Concerns the namesake of mine, Victor, Victor Bellin, the great Italian sculptor. And though he died a hundred years ago, Victor Bellin still reaches a ghostly hand into the present to prove once more his reputation as sculptor of the damned. It happened several years ago, just after Berlin, Berlin's mansion had been opened to the public as a museum. The two men in statue represent two suitors of Berlin's daughter. He hated them both. Then both disappeared, never to be seen or heard from again. The sculptor, who some say was mad, created this great statue and placed it here, point of his mansion, a warning to others. Now, if you follow me... How terrible. As we enter, enter, notice a play, black, facing you. It's made of solid gold, a letter state in the precious gems. It is said to be worth of the king's ransom. By living treasure, Berlin's referred to his jersey guarded daughter. He believed his motto to be a curse as powerful as that of the ancient Pharaoh Egyptians. He's also married after he death, however. He who steals my treasures will strangle of his own greed. But he who steals my living treasure be frozen in eternal anguish. And so the tour went on, but unknown to the guide, it grew fewer in number. And at last night, Fell and all out last call the lights are coming out now I am the final step and I am rich whoa what come here you oh please don't arrest me I can explain you see I'm a descendant of Bellings trees of Belling I just wanted to be alone with this what is work to see I could understand what made him so a descendant? Now, if this isn't perfect, what could be more c- comical? Because, Teresa, I am a thief. Oh no, and I'm about to steal Berlin's multi-dollar dollar, dollar motto with his great-granddaughter, or whatever you are, as a witness. What a joke, huh? But a curse. A curse, and he falls on even curses. A sound, what? Oh, stop it, you idiot. Stop screaming. A snake. I saw it move. Whether it moved or not, I'm not getting out of here. I not not only am I taking this treasure, treasure with me, but I'm taking you as well, my lovely Teresa. Ah, oh, you're hurting me. You're quite you'll make quite the nights quite you make the make nights quite entertaining for me with trouble. I have to bump bump you in a ditch somewhere. Go on, my my car is at the gate. Don't can't don't I can't stand it. Aha, but only I have the, de- have the dead for Dale's most valuable possession. I have the live, life to well as well. So please don't take me. But say without warning, what? Don't know! What? What is it? What happened to you? Help me, please! But I can't, see? No, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. E, please! A few minutes later. Right here, he stole the plaque, kidnapped me, and suddenly he started to scream. Nobody's here, not now, not a soul. Look around, man, see what what you can find. I don't want to go near that spot again. Look, sir, here's a plaque that she said. Vito Francisco, come here at once. Vito, take the young lady home at once. Tell her we have found nothing. Get in touch with her later. No. Francisco, no. you stay here with me. Yes, sir. No. At once, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I better, I better no. just pick this no. flack and don't touch no. that. But why, sir? A girl, sir. She might have told us. No. I went her, I sent her no. home because there's something no. here that could certainly send her to fresh hysterics. As for the plaque, I think we'd better let it alone. 
till we can get someone from the <coughs> museum to handle it. Because, you see, my friend, if we will use our flashlight, the two young men from Belain immortalized in marble, frozen in eternal anguish, have just been joined by a third. 